Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome again, Growing in Grace, the podcast that has gone on and on and on <laughs> and on for 10 years plus now. I'm Joel Brzezinski along with Mike Kapler, that guy giggling in the background. And speaking of the 10-year podcast, which we did uh, three weeks ago, we did receive one more message from somebody. We weren't able to get this into that podcast, but she says, uh, this is Jennifer. She says, I continue to enjoy the podcast and have found them very helpful. I like the 14, 15-minute format. Sometimes what I read in 15 minutes, I need to meditate on. I enjoy the two of yours humor and especially the grace message. And then after getting back to her, she sent one more message. This is after she had listened to the 10th anniversary podcast. It was especially meaningful to get the history of Growing in Grace. I also listened to Joseph Prince, but I especially like your short podcasts and the simplicity with which the two of you share the grace message. I feel included rather than preached to, which I guess is the intended format. And that's right. That really is what we're trying to do here. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jennifer. And uh, so, how's it going there, uh, Mr. Hey. Kapler? Moving into our 11th year of podcasting here for, for Growing in Grace. And I encourage you who have found us, we appreciate so much of your input and the comments and the feedback, all of that. It's all good. And whether you totally agree with us or not, you know, the funny thing is, Joel, we, we can have different opinions on things about God. It's okay to do that. <laughs> I don't know where we get it in our head in, in the church industry <laughs> that we have to agree on everything or, or I'm going to a different church or uh, I got offended. I'm going to a different church. Well, whatever. They got the wrong color hymn books. But we don't <laughs> always have to agree on everything because let's face it. I mean, there's so little that we know. There's just mm -hmm. so little that we know about God and eternity from beginning to end. The beginning that had no beginning, the end that will have no end. I mean. We've been on this earth, what, maybe a few decades on average, most of us, and we think we know so much, and we're trying to figure it all out. Ain't going to happen. And regardless of what our opinion is, you and me and anybody else in between, it's not going to change God. It's not going to change the truth, whether we think we're right or wrong. So what you believe doesn't always make it true. <laughs> well, Let's just, just all learn to get along with each other and love each other and take care of one another. Well, I think the proper thing for a person to do if they disagree with us is just go on a rant and call us false teachers and then be done with it. <laughs> well, well one, thing, one thing we haven't had in 10 years that we used to get in Christian radio, Joel, is we, I, we haven't had anybody threaten to pull their support from us. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we, we've never asked for it and we've never received any. So there. That's right. Um, but here sure. we are. If, if you find holes and something that we say, that's fine. I mean, tell us about it. Uh, we might agree, we might disagree, but it's okay. You know, we're not going to judge you because you have a different opinion on something. Our opinions have changed on some things over the years, and that's okay. You know, we're not here to say, what Mike and Joel say is the truth, and you better believe it. We're just two regular guys having a conversation on uh, some things that we've discovered over the years about God and his love and his grace and about, uh, you know, something we'll be talking about today, the words of Jesus and the words of Paul, uh, some different things that uh, we've seen. We, we've just seen some things over the years. We like to discuss them, and, and you can take what we say. You get to decide for yourself if what we're saying is... Um, is true or not, and you can bring it up with God, you can bring it up with us, and we'll just move on as, as friends, hopefully. Hopefully. And with that in mind, what we're about to talk about is the truth, and if you don't agree with us, you are wrong. <laughs> now, this is the truth. <laughs> okay, let's get into it, because we as Christians, Joel, as being the salt of the earth and the light of the world... <laughs> That's not really what we are. Have, have you ever heard anybody say, I'm asking you out there in, in, in Graceland, have you ever heard anybody say that we, we as Christians, are, are the salt of the earth and, and the light of the world? Let's take a look at this. This is leading up to the, the Sermon on the Mount in, in Matthew chapter 5. 
let's keep in mind some very important questions as to who Jesus was speaking to. And th- these things always must be kept in the, in the proper context because religion has kind of taught us to always sort of assume that Jesus is speaking directly to you and me. Keep in mind that Jesus was born under the law. He was born of a woman, born under the law, the book of Galatians says, so that he might redeem those who were under that law. Who was that? The Israelites, the, the Jewish people of Israel. It wasn't you and me. We, we Gentiles were never in the covenant. We all know that, right? By now, if you've been a long-time listener, you would know that. We were apart from that covenant. So when Jesus starts out here talking to these people under the law, these people from Israel, he starts out with some covenant talk here, Joel, because we've been talking a lot about the covenants here recently and the differences between the old that uh, passed away and the new that we are now under in Christ. So Jesus is getting their attention here with some covenant chatter, as I call it. He says, you, not you and me, but you people, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So can I see a show of hands? Who wants to be labeled as the salt of the earth? After that little statement there from Jesus who said, ah, you've lost your taste. The only thing you're good for now is to be thrown out and trampled. Isn't that what it sounds like? Then he goes on to say, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. And so what we've got here is an address to these Jewish people who are under the law. And there's something, Joel, that I want to get you jumping in here, but there's something called the covenant of salt back in the Old Testament. So we've got some covenant stuff here. And these people who were listening to Jesus speak knew that he was talking about this thing called the covenant of salt. He's referring to the covenant that they were now under. It wouldn't be the people who would have to be trampled underfoot and thrown out. It would be the covenant that would be thrown out. I'll let you jump in here. I just wanted to get the ball rolling. The one thing pops out to me is that um, if somebody does a new version of the Bible where somebody reads it, I want it to be you, uh, Mike Kepler, because <laughs> it said to be thrown out and trampled. <laughs> Man, that was awesome. <laughs> that was perfect. But uh, yeah, you are the salt of the earth, and you're so right there. You know, Jesus was talking to Jews who were under the law. Ephesians 2.11, Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, so Paul is talking to Gentiles, but who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at one time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And so we see that Israel... They were the ones who were of this covenant, the covenants of promise. They were the ones who had God. The Gentiles were the ones who didn't. And so when Jesus is talking to these people, Israel, in Matthew 5, we know that, like you said, they knew who he was talking to. They knew that he was not talking to Gentiles because the things that he was saying did not fit the Gentiles, but it fit perfectly in with who they were as Jews. You are the salt of the earth. And so when he says this, when Jesus is talking about these things, a city set on a hill, all of these things, this is talking about Israel and who they were under that covenant. They were God's people. They were that city. And they there was a purpose for that. There was a purpose for God doing all of these things under the old covenant with Israel. And uh, the Gentiles were excluded from that. And so we can see if we will just put ourselves in their shoes. If we were people who were of Israel, we would know that he was talking to us, the Israelites, and not to those Gentiles over there, because they were far off and so on and so forth. And so, uh, but I'm intrigued by this covenant of salt that you're talking about, because that's a term that I've never heard before. Well, I know, and that's why we're, we're not the salt of the earth. This, this was covenant chatter, and, and like I said, it would be the covenant that would need to be thrown out, not, not the people. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul did say at one time that our speech should be with grace as though seasoned with salt, and James said something similar, but there's no reference in the New Testament epistles to us being described or identified as the salt of the earth. This thing with the salt 
the, the Israelites were instructed that sacrifices should be seasoned with salt or sealed with salt as a sign of their covenant with God. And entering into this covenant of salt meant binding one's self to another, to God in this case, with maximum loyalty, truthfulness. Uh, it might even mean suffering death rather than breaking the covenant. And so what it really represented was purification and the loyalty, or at least the effort of loyalty, that the Israelites pledged to God under that covenant. Uh, granted, they didn't keep their pledge. They weren't able to live up to the promise of trying to fulfill that law, which is why that there was fault with the salt. You know, we, we, <laughs> we know that in Hebrews 8, there was fault found with the people in that covenant, and the salt became tasteless. So Jesus said, hey, it loses its saltiness, loses its taste. It's no good for anything. It needs to be thrown out. Sounds kind of harsh if he was talking about us or even the Israelites for that matter. And I like what you said, too, about the light of the world because, or the city on a hill. Back at that time, that, that's how Israel was, was seen, and, and that's how they were designated, if you will. But we in Christ, we're, we're not the light of the world. We're in the light of Christ. And it's also interesting that, that Jesus mentioned the phrase, the house there, when he was referring to the light. Who was it that God made the covenant with? It was the house of Israel. We're, we're talking about Israel here, people. <laughs> this is who Jesus is, is directing his stuff at here. But we're not the light of the world. We're in the light of Christ. Our present condition in the new covenant as partakers of the divine nature, we have become children of light in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can find that in 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 and 1 Peter 2.9. We're individuals in his light. It's not the same thing as what the Lord's reference to the nation of Israel here as a city on a hill or the light of the world. Right, yeah, and I was just looking this up. The book of Numbers, 1819. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer to the Lord, I have given you and your sons and daughters. Again, this is to Israel. I have given to you and your sons and daughters with you as an ordinance forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord with you and your descendants with you. Uh, so, yeah, that's some good stuff there that uh, I hadn't even seen that before. But just knowing that, you know, this whole um, idea of, uh, you, you often hear sermons about the Sermon on the Mount. You know, that's what Matthew, Matthew 5 is the start of the Sermon on the Mount, even before the sermon. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, all of that. When we try to apply these things to Christian living, to life in Christ, but that's not really what it was about. Jesus was talking to the salt of the earth, Israel. He was talking to them regarding that covenant. And then eventually, of course, we find out through the words of Paul and even through the words of Jesus himself at other times that there's a, a new covenant. There's a different thing that was coming. So those words weren't for us. Well, I know we've got more to say about all this, but we're going to have to take a little break. But it's for a good reason. You're going to like it. <laughs> Andrew Farley, author of The Naked Gospel and uh, several other books as well. He has been kind enough to give us some of his time. And for the next three weeks, Andrew Farley will be our special guest right here on Growing in Grace. So we're looking forward to having Andrew share his thoughts on various things. Again, during the next three weeks on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.